And from the struggle, when the sunlight was able to come in and hit the wings of the butterfly, the wings were able to open up a little bit more. Pretty soon, it broke away the chrysalis. And the butterfly, from the process, gained the strength it needed to fly off. I said, well, what, what, what's the deal with the story? Well, I think, and I believe, and I learned, that oftentimes God sees the struggle. He sees us going through some hard times. He sees those young men. See those young men. He understands that, yes, they're in situations that are hard. There's a struggle there. But I believe with all my heart that instead of just making it better, sometimes he just watches the process because it's through the struggles, it's through the hardship, it's through the pain that we gain the strength that we need to be all that God wants us to be. And so with that process, sometimes all we need to do is walk with them and listen. Sometimes all we need to do is just breathe life into them. We don't need to reach in and try to change their lifestyle. We just need to be there for them. So it's through the struggle that we gain the strength we need to really be successful. I'm reading a book by Barry Griswold, The, Par the Adversity Paradox. Barry suggests that it's the actual adversity that we go through. Give us the savviness and the strength we need to be all that we are supposed to be. And so I'm, I'm pretty, I'm done. There's a couple more things and I'm going to take my seat. <laughs> you can't give up. Black Baptist preacher and opportunity to talk. <laughs> I think that is just a, but I do promise you this. Two more minutes and I'll take my seat. Um, I want to tell you about um, a biblical story that many of you may be familiar with. And it had to, if I had a title for it, it would be Planted with a Purpose. Planted with a Purpose. Because I believe that I was planted in my family for a purpose. I believe my mother was planted in my life with a purpose. I believe wholeheartedly that I was planted in my family's life because I led my mother to Christ and I led my father to Christ. All because Eric Lee was planted <coughs> in my life with a purpose. Many of you in this room, you don't know why you got the young man or young woman you got for a mentor. You don't know coming down the road why you're gonna have that person and not the other person. But I believe with all of my being, it's for a purpose. I'm reminded of a story in Luke chapter 13 it was about a tree that was planted in a vineyard. It was planted in a vineyard. A vineyard was great soil, great opportunities to flourish and be productive. But the owner of the vineyard came and from a distance looked at this tree, and the tree looked like it should be productive. When you look around, there's a lot of productivity in this room. The tree looked so productive because it was a fig tree, and fig trees have big leaves, big foliage, and the leaves are there as an indication that there's fruit behind it. The owner, he would get to the tree, and he would expect the tree, and there were no fruit. The vine dresser was called, he said, listen, for three years I've been coming expecting fruit on this tree, but there, there's no fruit. The owner said, cut it down. Why encumber, why mess up the ground? Why take up dead space? But I believe that tree was planted with a purpose, purpose of productivity. So it was a mentor, it was a vine dresser, it was Jesus in the story who said, wait a minute, let me work on it a little longer. Don't give up on it. I know that Bernie, the second chance opportunity from the brain is going to be there. Sometimes we all need a second chance or another chance. And so the vine dresser said, look, let me work on it, let me dig about it. Let me uproot the things that are around it. And that's sometimes the role of leaders and mentors. It's just to, don't give up on the tree. The tree is planted with a purpose, and so are you. So just dig about it. Just work up the soil. Get something that is passionate to start to work in the roots and get the life and the vibrancy to come back. Then the vine dress say, look, once I dig about it, let me dung it. Let me put some fertilizer on it. Sometimes, you know, You'll be in a situation where it's a little smelly. It gets a little, and that's not comfortable to be a mentor, to be a leader, to be someone that people expect to make a difference. But the mind dresser said, let me dung it. Let me work on it a little bit. And then he says, if it bears fruit, then well. If not, then cut it down. And as you read in Luke, there's not an end of the story. 
And so I believe that as we look and as we move forward in mentoring and leadership, regardless of the background of our lives, regardless of where we've been, where we've come from, while we think about where we're going, we all have to write our own end of the story. If we bear fruit, well. If not, what good are we? So we can make a difference in one kid's life. If we can pour into one young person's life, could it be that we were productive enough to fulfill our purpose as the people of God? Just one. I'm reminded that over one repentant sinner, over one person who comes back, over one tree that bears fruit, the heavens are blazed and they have a hallelujah good time over one. So, Soy and others who've come, and even the challenge as I, as, I, as I stand here today and tonight is to continue to make a difference with one. Pour into the life of someone else. And I guarantee you this, your life will be enriched. You heard Mike. Mike, and now I understand in high school why I never made the honor roll. <laughs> <laughs> now I get it. After all this time, I get it now. It was full. It was full. You know, you helped me tonight with that, so I appreciate it. Um, but listen, just want to leave you with one last thing. Just be encouraged with what you're already doing for 10 years. Um, I believe with all my, my, my being that what God has in store is some more struggle in some areas because he's still preparing for what is yet to come. I believe that you're planted here with a purpose, and that purpose is mighty in God. And I believe there will be some times that we'll be a little barren. There will be some that you'll be, you'll try to pour into their lives, and what you think is an easy call will be, will be barren. You only could dig about and dung it. That tree has a choice to make, to be productive or not. Either it's going to be well or not. All right? Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.